Manchester United are through to the knockout stages of the Champions League, but the search for a permanent manager continues. Pochettino, Brendan Rodgers, Zinedine Zidane, Luis Enrique, the list goes on and on and on. And Ben Jacobs, my colleague and friend from CBS Sports, joins to discuss this and much more. Kego Lasso, Manchester United Circus continues, begins right now. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to Kego Lasso. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We are on Twitter, Kego Lasso, pod, youtube.com forward slash Kego Lasso. We're also on CBS Sports and your CBS Sports app. And don't forget Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thank you so much for being part of the family. We have a special video today uh, for you all, especially Manchester United fans. Ben Jacobs joins the show. Ben, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Luis. Just been keeping across the Manchester United circus, as you put it. Absolutely. I'm glad that you're here to go along for the ride. But as we mentioned, everybody, Manchester United makes it through to the knockout stages of the Champions League, a 2 nothing win against Villarreal. And to be honest with you, it's kind of weird just how they keep grinding these wins because really I, I don't see much identity, but that's for another day. Today is about trying to figure out who the manager will be for Manchester United. So many names, as we mentioned, Ben and Mauricio Pochettino leads the race. Uh, per, of course, our Fabrizio Romano and other loyal uh, servants of the Manchester United circle. Now, here's a little uh, quote from Pochettino ahead of his game with PSG and Man City in the Champions League when he was asked about this. Of course, he was going to be asked about this. He said, we're not here to speak about that, meaning the United interest. I respect my club, PSG. What another club does is none of my concern. I will not comment on it. I'm happy in Paris. I love the club and the fun and the fans. It's a wonderful, um, it's wonderful with PSG at the moment. Interesting. I don't really believe in Ben Jacobs. What's the latest, do you think? And what's going on with PSG and Pochettino's case as uh, they look for a new manager, Manchester United? I don't believe Poch either. I think we know he's unhappy at PSG because he's being forced to implement PSG's strategy and vision rather than his own. And the pressing style of football isn't necessarily working. His family's still in London as well. So there's personal and professional reasons to move to Manchester United. So the key question is, are PSG prepared to let Poch go and for what price and then what time of the season? So if we're trying to figure this thing out, first of all, we need to know, do Manchester United need an interim manager? Because Carrick is potentially the interim to the interim. And if they need an interim manager, is that because they've got a name that they can only get over the summer? And then from Poch's perspective, he's maybe the most flexible because is he going to leave mid-season or are they going to have to wait until the end of the season? That will depend on the compensation. And as I understand it, whether or not PSG can get a replacement mid-season and Zinedine Zidane is free. So I've spoken to senior sources at PSG and I do understand that under the right circumstances, they would be prepared to let Poch leave mid-season. And those right circumstances are compensation, around about 10 million and a replacement lined up first. But all that on paper sounds relatively simple, but in reality, it's a lot of ifs and buts and Manchester United don't necessarily have a clear plan. Yeah, they don't have a clear plan. That's uh, definitely the case, even when uh, they they said goodbye to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after an international break. I'm wondering, Ben, uh, about, you know, first of all, Pochettino's case, right? You know, if he leaves Ben season, mid-season, you, you, the compensation to PSG, but then there's also compensation that's being dealt with the Solskjaer as well, right? So we're dealing with quite a lot of money here to try and figure this out. And then the Guardian comes out with a report about Ernesto Valverde. How close is that uh, of maybe a possibility? Is this list just so long? Because I haven't even talked about Eric Ten Hag and others as well. How, how close is the Ernesto Valverde situation? Well, I think Ernesto Valverde is the interim option. The other candidates, and there's five in total, seem like they're more permanent solutions. Ten Hag, obviously, and Brendan Rodgers, potentially Zinedine Zidane and Mauricio Pochettino, although Zidane is relatively reluctant to move to Manchester United, even if senior board members at United, as I understand it, would quite like him to take the reins. And that's why there's so many names in the mix, not just because United don't have a plan, but there's divisions amongst senior figures as to who they think can guide this club forward in the right direction. And until they determine that, the other question they have to answer is, do they trust Carrick potentially 
through as interim manager over a series of games or until the end of the season. And winning against Villarreal by two goals to nil may, to some extent, alleviate concerns as to whether he can be the interim manager. But I still think United see Carrick as the interim to the interim if they're going to go down that approach. And then Valverde is the option that they're looking at. What's interesting about Valverde is that Manchester United have already spoken to him. They've made it very clear to him, unlike other candidates that they spoken to even before the loss to Watford, that it would be a short-term solution. And there'll be many in the game that might be quite surprised if Valverde chooses to take on the project on such a short-term basis, because you look at his CV, he's won a couple of La Ligas, he's obviously worked with Lionel Messi before, so that relationship they think with Ronaldo will help him come into the dressing room, but that's a little bit glib as well, because they're completely different characters to work with, but they obviously think that Valverde could be a sensible and reliable solution between now and the end of the season. So it's plausible. And if Manchester United go down that route, he's probably the candidate they'll go for. But again, it's two competing strategies because one buys them time until the end of the season and the others are more permanent solutions. So if they can find a way to get someone like Pochettino now, that takes all of the uncertainty out of the equation. Because if you bring in an interim that doesn't know Manchester United Football Club, Despite his CV, it's going to be very difficult with the kind of egos and names in the dressing room to settle and get things done, especially when Valverde's style is very cautious, relatively slow, very pragmatic. The only real thing that he's got in common with the current Manchester United style and the style they want is a 4-2-3-1 formation. Other than that, his style and philosophy would be relatively different to whoever comes in after him, and that's cause for concern as well. And not to mention he's never managed in the Premier League, and that can be a, a very tricky thing, especially mid-season. All right, if you're a gambling man, and Jacobs, who are you going with? Because sometimes I just feel I tweeted a joke about it, saying, you know, they uh, made it to the knockout stages thanks to that 2 nothing win against Villarreal, which basically means Michael Carrick gets a six-year permanent deal. But, you know, it's not that much of a joke. That's pretty much what happened to Solskjaer, right, after beating PSG away from home and then suddenly... You know, all the good things came his way. Uh, ironically enough, Pochettino still unemployed at that time. Like, you know, was trying to, you know, wait for that job later on. But what do you? Who do you think gets this gig at this point? Do you think Pochettino is closer than Michael Carrick get staying interim for the longer period, longer period of time? I think we'll learn about how close Poch is to coming mid-season after the Champions League game against Manchester City and the way that the football gods have cast that fixture. It's very difficult for Poch to say anything because he's focused on the blue half of the Manchester and everyone's talking about the red half of Manchester. But what I do understand is that he's asked to stay on for a couple of extra days to have talks. And those talks are surely with senior Manchester United figures with a view to working out what the role will entail, whether he'll get more freedom than he currently does at Paris Saint-Germain, and then at what point the clubs can potentially come to an agreement that allows him to leave mid-season. And if those talks go well, Poch is the overwhelming favourite in my view, because he ticks two boxes. One, a name Manchester United have always admired, that plays a kind of pressing style that United want, and two, someone that might prove to be available in the middle of the season. The danger with Carrick, despite your joke, is that he actually does do well, and then much like when Solskjaer first got the job, he stays in the job for longer than people anticipated. The honeymoon period wears off, and Manchester United are Solskjaer 2.0, and the cycle repeats itself. But the other name that we haven't mentioned is Eric Ten Hag, along, of course, with Brendan Rodgers, but Leicester's form is dipping. Rodgers is interested. He'd have to, in my opinion, leave quickly Rodgers. Otherwise, come the end of the season, he might not be as marketable. But Eric Ten Hag, for me, is actually where my money has always been. Now, at the point where I was talking to Ajax figures about whether Ten Hag might take the role, Pochettino's camp were making it very clear that he wasn't being considered and there'd be no contact from Manchester United. And the latter is still strictly true. As Poch comes more into the equation, it becomes a straight head-to-head -head between those two. But Ten Hag has everything Manchester United need and a desire to join that football club, but only at the end of the season. So if Manchester United are patient and they see his style and philosophy and man management as the right approach, he is where I'd put my money come the end of the season. But if Poch undercuts that, and becomes available mid-season, then put your money on Poch as being the next Manchester United manager.
Yeah, no, that's a good call. I think that's how I see it. Uh, and also, why don't you just grab Edwin van der Sar while you're at it, the chief executive of IX, and then, you know, you could get a nice little reunion right there. Ben Jacobs uh, from CBS Sports. Thank you so much, my friend, uh, for being part of the gig, and we'll see you next time. Look forward to it, Luis. Thank you so much, everybody. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Kegolasso Pod, YouTube.com forward slash Kegolasso, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, CBS Sports, and your CBS Sports app. We will see you next time.